Bubbly Steve is available for pre-order at shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. You've got less than a month to pre-order this 15-inch plushie. Check them out. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kickstarter. They hired a new comic book uh, outreach or consultant person. I don't know. I think it's the new Camilla Zhang. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's going to be the same type of situation over Kickstarter. Uh, this new person, it's either Jamila or Jamila Rouser. Again, do not contact her. That's not the purpose of the video. But well, you're probably blocked anyway. Uh, well, we are. <laughs> we're already we're, we're already blocked. We don't know who the hell she was. I didn't even know who she was. I saw that Star Wars girl Anna was talking about her going on a blocking spree. I thought it was like a Lucasfilm person. I didn't even realize that Kickstarter hired a new comics uh, consultant. And sure enough, I checked and we were blocked. And this is. Uh, really interesting because we've actually been very big well not very big but we've we've been cheerleaders for some kickstarter projects like berserker and spawn and uh, we do have some friends that use kickstarter and we had actually considered our next project using kickstarter in addition to indiegogo but now that we know the person in charge of their their comics section is blocking people including us that's not gonna happen no yeah way to go kickstarter way to go i thought you were doing better now look here's the thing if somebody is actually being harassed by people specifically i can see them blocking them because they're harassing them but it seems like a lot of people who've been blocked don't even know who she was didn't know her had nothing to do with her have never, never even looked at her cross side and and kickstarter God, has a problem here because their person that they're putting in charge of this stuff is going out there and preemptively blocking a bunch of potential customers yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this uh, again. I thought stupidly that Kickstarter was doing better. They they got rid of uh, Camilla Zhang, uh, claimed it was you know layoffs due to these unprecedented times. But reality, they got rid of her. I believe because she had helped start uh, a union. Union, yeah. A union over there, and, and she the was... reason they wanted the union was so they can control what types of projects. Right. 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 You know, now, meanwhile, Substack was getting under fire. We don't have any neutral platforms. How dare they? When you have, and then you're trying to argue that Substack shouldn't be allowed to have certain people on it because, you know, it needs to stay neutral. And then Kickstarter hires someone who's out there doing this. Yeah. So this is, this is not, uh, not going to score you any points. Kickstarter, again, people sort of thought, well, they got rid of uh, Camilla. Maybe, maybe things are better. Uh, and that does not appear to be the case. So we're going to talk about it before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We have over 231,000 subs. Woohoo! Uh, thank you for the support. Greatly appreciate it. We do talk about the comic book industry, having worked in the comic book industry before. Uh, we talk about animation, art, the business side of making stuff. And uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo have become increasingly important to people who want to produce their own comic book projects. Now, the problem with Kickstarter, for those of you who missed the memo, uh, a couple of years ago, Kickstarter started gatekeeping certain projects. There was a YouTuber they did not like. It was your boy Zach, Diversity in Comics. And he attempted to use Kickstarter, as I understand it, to crowdfund his comic book, and Kickstarter would not let him use the platform, not because there was anything wrong with the project, but because some people at Kickstarter didn't like his YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. That was literally it. And so then what happened was a bunch of people jumped ship to Indiegogo and Indiegogo blew up for comic book crowdfunding because Indiegogo became a viable option to Kickstarter. At that point, for comics, Indiegogo was just kind of an also ran. It was like you used it if you couldn't use Kickstarter. Well, and here's the thing that, that's interesting is that they're basically now you have Substack and everything else. These activist types are basically going around trying to make sure the only people that could ever crowdfund projects are them. Yeah. So this is uh, it's really interesting because uh, Camilla uh, Zhang, who was the comics outreach person who was uh, I don't think she was directly involved in the gatekeeping of of your boy, Zach, but but they definitely you know, had had a certain bent over Kickstarter and there were certain projects they didn't like and certain creators they didn't like. Now, she's apparently working with Zoop, which is some other new, you know, crowdfunding platform. But yeah, we're, we're seeing it with Substack right now. Substack is basically just Patreon with more blogging features. Mm -hmm. And 
there are a lot of comic book creators, professional comic book creators, Marvel and DC people, taking deals with Substack and the same... And, and not Zoop. And not Zoop. And these same people are getting a hair up their ass about that. The same kinds of people that, you know, brigaded for gatekeeping over at Kickstarter are now angry that some comic pros are taking what I've heard is, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to go create exclusive comics for mm -hmm. Substack, which in this market, you'd be crazy not to take the money. Right, right. But, you know, so now that's going on. And then what people were yelling about was, oh, well, they let people that are, are far right have, you know, deals and they need to be have a neutral platform. And it's like there is no such thing as a neutral platform because, you know, for all you're complaining about Substack and, and some people you don't like over there, the, you know, we have, uh, you know, Patreon and, you know, Kickstarter, you know, pandering to the far left. And, you know, I think both extremes are, I'm going to go on record, both both extremes suck. I, extremists in any in any way, I think, are, are bad. But you know what? I think that there should be let the market decide, and you know, unless they're doing something really, really, really egregious. Yeah, if you're if you're posting CP or something, or you're posting legitimate, you know, hate speech, legitimate hate speech, not just oh, this is a dissenting opinion, but mm -hmm. actual legitimate, yes, you know, you know, uh, uh, I didn't like that, that cartoon show. <gasps> you were not right, Yassi. Yeah, so stupid. Anyway, this is who they hire. So they're they're probably trying to now that you know Berserker has made a ridiculous amount of money, Spawn's made a ridiculous amount of money. More creators. They're trying to lose money now. Yeah, they're trying to lose money. They hired this person. Uh, again, I was not familiar with her. I do like her picture, though. Yeah, her picture's not bad, but she's, she's, you know... Her glasses are fun, too. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're... Sorry, I'm Find just, something you know, nice to say, you know? We can I like her glasses, nice for say. real. Anyway. Her, her glasses are interesting. I think Elton John would approve. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she does indie comics, and, and uh, you yeah, know... Yeah, she doesn't really... I, I was thinking she had this big, you know, background, you know, that gave her the no, right to no. be a consult... Whoa, hey. Yep. Uh, okay. Does indie comics has her own indie comics publisher? Whatever. Okay. We have our own comics publisher too. Yeah. Be. Um, you Does know. that mean we get to be consultants? Yeah. By the way, speaking of which, uh, this is what this is what irritates me about this is we did a reprint drive on uh, the Shadowbinders webcomic as hardcovers and Indiegogo. Now we didn't let it go into overtime like a lot of people let it go mm -hmm. for months and months and months, but. Just in a, a month, just books. We didn't have any other perks, any other tiers. It was just books. We did, uh, you know, over eighty-four thousand dollars, and then we did another fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on Shopify mm -hmm. sales so far, and we're still selling books. Yeah, we still have them if you want them. Um, so you know, and this is this this is old material. So we were sitting here like, okay, well, we're actually getting ready to launch campaigns for the first new material we've done in a long time and continue Shadowbinders and do some other projects. And we're looking at the, you know, from a business perspective, like maybe we want to hit Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Well, apparently Kickstarter is being taken off the table at this point because uh, your girl here blocked us. We don't even know her. I don't even know her. Like I said, again, if somebody has harassed you directly, then by all means, block them, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is with this person, other people like them, is they keep sharing these block lists, and your your total crime could be something like you 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 like somebody who knew somebody who who followed somebody they didn't like. I mean, ours is because we're clownfish TV. Even though for some reason I keep not me personally never makes the list. I don't think it's I think it's because clownfish TV actually follows some people they might not like. I think I think what we say isn't it that bad. No, I think it's because clownfish. I think I think we actually follow Ethan Van Skyver. Oh, I don't. And that might be that. That's probably what the common denominator is. I just think is. it's funny because all these lists and, and you're always blocked and clownfish is always blocked and I very rarely am blocked. Uh, anyway, I found out about it. Like I said, originally, uh, that Star Wars girl, and I thought it was some Lucasfilm person. She's like, oh, check to see if you're blocked. I'm like, oh, this has got to be a Lucasfilm thing, right? No, because uh, that umbrella guy, Tug, posted it and said it was Kickstarter's new comic consultant. Uh, blocked him and thousands of comic book creators, uh, hundreds of thousands of customers. I'm a creator. I make comics with my seven-year-old daughter. Um, I think customers should be treated with respect and follow who I want. Uh, yeah, so I was like, wait. That's Kickstarter's new comics consultant. I said, we were considering using both Kickstarter and Indiegogo for our next crowdfunding campaign. I see we're blocked. Not even sure why. That's them. And they dropped the, the block in the last day. Saw Peter Gilmore noting he was blocked and saw Wait, others this, too. this happened? They just, just happened, yeah. 
Uh, I don't even think Camilla Zhang blocked us. Yeah, and we actually were critical of her, and, and I don't think she has. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, yeah, you know, we did uh, pretty good for a reprint, and we're going to be doing our first new material in a while. And uh, Kickstarter was an option, well, and now it's not. Didn't Kickstarter, like, get rid of Zhang and a bunch of people because yes. they said they didn't have any enough money because they weren't making any money? Yes. Right? So their answer is to hire a consultant who turns around and blocks a bunch of people. Don't you think that's going to be a problem where you don't make, you know, money? If, you, if your potential clients and customers are all blocked by the person you hired as a consultant for, you know, outreach or whatever? Kickstarters, look, the Camilla Jang situation actually cost Kickstarter so much comic book money because uh, millions of dollars in comic book crowdfunding went to Indiegogo. And there are people that aren't even, you know, comic skate. We're not comic skate, but they went to Indiegogo because they saw the, the horse shit going on at Kickstarter. And they're like, I don't want to take a chance putting my project on a platform that could kick me off. Well, that's or, what Patreon, same yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, people were going to go to Patreon and they left and they, you didn't have to agree with the people they kicked off because right. we didn't agree with lots of the, you know, with lots of they said. But the problem was people were like, wait a minute, you're not giving an explanation. You're basically like, it's a case by case basis, depending on who you are. And that's kind of what Kickstarter was doing too with some people. And it's like, there's no actual like criteria you can look at. There's no rubric you can see, yeah. you know, you know, what am I violating? Why am I kicked off? It was basically like, we don't like you today. So you don't get to be on Patreon or you don't get to be on Kickstarter. And, and they thought it got better because they got rid of, you know, Zhang. And now we have We're right back the exact to same thing. Exactly. And it didn't work last time what the hell makes you think it's going to work this time kickstarter people who might have actually given you the benefit of doubt like maybe we made a mistake maybe we we hired the wrong person let's let's try to course correct they're gonna look at this and be like nah you ain't changed at all it's, yeah especially if she wasn't around block and people like this person all right yeah and we don't even never interact with this person ever nope. Nope. i don't even know them nope uh, so Critical Blast has an article up on it. And here's her, her uh, announcement tweet. Yeah, this I was just it. like a day ago. Because I'm not blocked. Big news. I'm Kickstarter's new comics consultant. Kickstarter was one of the reasons I felt I even had a chance of making comics the way I wanted to make them. And I can't wait to help other creators. Well, good luck with that because I think your your blockchain list is, is pretty expansive. And uh, they're going to look at that. And they're going to be like, hell no. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Um, so this is the article from uh, RJ Carter. For the past few years, Kickstarter and Indiegogo have, uh, have been more than just competing platforms for crowdfunding. The division of choice has ranged from preference of user interface to different ways they collect funds. For some, the choice is almost a religious fervor, with creators recalling how Kickstarter removed certain projects in the past. Uh, it's a settlement that lingers to such a degree that independent comics professionals like uh, John Malin said that he wouldn't have anyone on his platform that was using Kickstarter. Uh, almost as if to underscore the point, the announcement was made today that Kickstarter had a new comics consultant who's basically blocking everybody. So good luck trying to reach out to her. As many comics creators and comics journalists, including cr uh, Critical Blast, discovered, Rouser comes to Kickstarter with a Twitter account already pre-blocking innumerable independent So creators. basically, you only get to be on Kickstarter, uh, well, at least according to this person, if you're somebody that, that they like. Yeah. Uh, the blocking occurs on such a widespread scale that it would be unlikely that many of them were done personally. Rather, no, it was yeah, a block it's list. a block list, guaranteed. Yeah, it's really interesting because there are some people that are uh, would consider them uh, Comicsgate or Comicsgate adjacent that actually do use Kickstarter, and it would be interesting if they were also blocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some some creators out there that you know they do use kickstarter this is a you know a huge debate i guess that people have i mean again i'll, I'll be completely honest we considered and we talked about it. we're like we could the next project technically uh to cover all the bases do a month on indiegogo a month on kickstarter and then kick the project over to the store apparently that's not going to happen i'm not going to do business with a company that blocks us yeah, well, we well, didn't even do anything. Yeah. Well, the company didn't. The no, person but they still. hired. And it was after they hired this person at the blocks chain to be. That seems to be what. Oh, we what don't know because saying, yeah. we didn't we didn't know who the hell this person was. I mean, honestly, other than the fact that they're a Kickstarter consultant, I don't think they're that big of a deal, really. But, um, but letting power go to their head. But it's just funny to me because the people that have bitched and whined the most about Kickstarter and about like Berserker and about, you know, different like publishers using Kickstarter and giving Kickstarter money and all this other stuff, because it's not fair, um, are the same types of people that they keep pandering to. It's like the people that literally don't think it's fair you take money and that you help big companies that you're going to cut from are the people you're going to listen to. 
yeah, these people are averse to making money. Okay. Uh, this is why these comic book creators are going to Substack, and some of them they're getting dogpiled, like uh, you know Tinian from from Batman, and he's just quitting Twitter. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care. I'm taking the money. I'm not doing anything wrong, you know. And it's not like your your comic book blog posts are are funding some uh, alt right nut job, you know. Well, blog or some shit like that twitter in general stupid. is a problem because it's yeah, it like is. you know this person apparently allegedly gets hired as a consultant no one would have cared or thought anything of it until they start going around blocking everyone yeah it could be that they were blocked before people just didn't know who this person was to look uh, yeah i never um, i never heard and that's her, possible so. too but the thing is if you're going to be taking this job and you're supposed to be rep you know a consultant and you're supposed to be working with kickstarter and you're supposed to be working with potential clients and things like that. It's probably not a good idea to have a bunch of your potential clients, especially ones that can bring in big, big, you know, crowd funders. Yeah, block them. Yeah. That's colossally dumb. Really stupid. Because there are a lot of people that maybe wouldn't, their projects wouldn't have gotten blocked, but they might look at this situation and be like, I can't take a chance on having our project blocked or having whatever or starting the kickstarter and then oh i don't like that person i don't like that person because somebody on your team said something or you follow somebody like that i don't like or somebody that you know follows somebody i don't like you follow <laughs> you follow ethan van skyver from 10 years ago because you were you both worked in the comic book industry but we don't like what he says now and we didn't even realize you or you didn't even realize you still followed him. But because of that, we're going to pull the plug on your your campaign. Mm -hmm. So the gatekeeping is bad unless they're the ones that get to be the ones that gatekeep. Yeah. You know, so, then it's completely stupid. fine because it's them. Um, but they bring up Alterna Comics. They, they had the and this is, you know, this rankled a bunch of people because they said that, uh, you know, Peter Samedi put the law down and said you're not using blockchains because you're going to get customers caught up in that. You know, someone harasses yeah. you specifically, then by all means, you can block them. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think that's a sensible policy. I think How many companies that we work for that we had to have, you know, actual like social media agreements in place yeah. that, you know, here's how you behave on social yep. media while you're working with us. Yep. Things like that. It is completely normal. Yeah. It's only people who never get that far that didn't know that was completely normal. that had a shit fit about what Peter Smetti asked. Yeah, so this is uh, not not a good look. Uh, I, I don't even know how Kickstarter could uh, defend this. I mean, if she wants to block people... Yeah, Kickstarter, let's hear your answer to this. They won't give you an answer. No, but if they, well, they were smart, they would. Yeah, um, and I'm not asking for anybody to be fired. I no, not at all. I don't want anybody to be harassed, but I'm just telling you, uh, as a publisher, you know, as as you know, publishers who actually have you know, we're not doing gangbusters, we're not doing you know millions of dollars, but again, this was a reprint. I don't know what's going to happen when we actually put new material out there, but as as publishers who are looking at your platform, I can tell you right now that because your comic book uh, outreach person is blocking us, the answer is no way in hell. Mm -hmm. So make it out what you again, will we never talked to them never nope. interface with them have nothing against them have, you know don't know what they have a problem with us for um whatever I, whatever so, you know there's and it's not just us we're just one of many who are going to be like well i'm not putting my projects there now yeah so good luck with that good luck with that uh we'll stick to indiegogo and and selling through shopify uh that's a business plan going forward uh, I'm sure lots of people who aren't blocked will have no problem using your platform, so you're probably good. Mm. But uh, not, 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 uh, not. Well, what about us? Because I'm personally not blocked. I don't care. You are blocked, both both the main account and you. It's a principle. I'm thing. not. I know. I'm just saying. It's a principle. What are they gonna do then? I don't know. I don't know. Are we gonna wrap this one up? Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.